um, let me just talk a little bit about these poll results. 22% um, of you said you didn't know what a research plan was, and so that's great. This is the um, perfect place for you. I hope by the end that um, you'll certainly understand what a research plan is, and I hope that I'll convince you that you'll want to use one. I'm not trying to scare anybody off with the idea of a research plan, and I really want to convince everyone that it's a good idea and it's more of a thought process than anything. As for using a research plan for online research, now I have to say that virtually everyone just gets online and goes. Uh, you know, even I do it. Uh, there's no way around it. Uh, you jump online and um, you just can't slow down. You can just gather information so quickly and the whole thought of capturing where you're going and recording stuff uh, it just it seems too cumbersome. But I have a couple um, thoughts on how we can capture that information a little bit better. So at the end, towards the end of the webinar, we're going to be talking a bit about um, online research planning. It's really fun to be able to, to come here and talk about research plans. Research plans are actually one of my favorite things to talk about. And it's not like I can get together with my colleagues and say, hey, have you developed any great research plans lately? I mean, uh, people just don't really talk about that. Yet, research plans are so critical to genealogical research, and they're critical to the success that we have. So if you'd like to save time, if you'd like to be more effective in your genealogical research, if you'd like to solve your problems more quickly, then the research plan is going to be your road to success. All right, so let's just put it out there what we're going to cover today so you'll know um, where we're starting and where we're going. I'm going to talk a little bit about data uh, at the start and forms. Then I'm going to get into what exactly your research plan is. Um, we're going to go step by step in how to create a research plan. I'm going to give you lots of examples. Uh, we're going to talk about when to use a research plan. And then we're going to get into the nitty gritty, where I'm going to use an example, and we're going to just walk through it step by step. Um, one thing to keep in mind is you know, when I pick an example, uh, I'm picking something from what I know from my area. Uh, it's the concept that is important here, not the geography and not the time period. The whole idea of the research plan can be uh, transferred to any time frame in any location in the world. So just keep that in mind. Don't get weighed down with uh, the particulars in the example that I use. One of the biggest problems that we have with genealogical research, speaking of online research, is data overload. Uh, there's just so much data. Forget about even going to a library or a repository in person. There's so much accessible online, and it's incredibly overwhelming. We've got Ancestry.com, we've got Genealogy Bank, we've got Fold3, we've got Family Search putting information online faster than we can keep up with. I mean, I'm at the point now of having to go to Family Search like once a week just to see what they put up there that's new. Um, so we're in a situation where part of our problem is just overabundance of information. And what we really need to be able to do is cull through that information quickly, and we need to interpret it right so that we can use it for our own research and, and try not to get distracted and, and go off on side trails that really don't impact us and waste our time. Now, one of the ways that we can um, start to control this data overload is with forms. And luckily, within the genealogical community, forms have been around for a really long time. Uh, and there are forms for everything. Uh, there are many forms available on the web. Um, there are free forms available at Family Tree Magazine, uh, at Ancestry.com. Um, the Family Search Wiki has forms, and Cindy's List also has forms. Now, the reason I'm starting with forms is because there are research plans that are available um, from these websites, but there's also lots of other sort of data control forms like um, census uh, forms, you know, the 1800 census or the 1850 census or, you know, whichever country you happen to be in, there's the forms for those. 
personally, I like forms best when they go for a set uh, database or set criteria. Okay, so when you look, when you talk about like a a census form, say the 1900 census form, there are specific fields, and then you fill in the information uh, relating to those specific fields. And in that use, a form is really beneficial, and that one form can be used by everybody uh, for that purpose. Forms can be more challenging to use when they don't fit quite neatly into uh, data fields like uh, probate records uh, or perhaps land records. Um, those kind of things could have different results and they won't fit as neatly into a standard set uh, on a piece of paper. And so for the ones that are standard, I like to use forms, but for the ones that uh, vary a little bit, I like to create my, my own. So I just want to put that out there. Uh, that sometimes customizing your own forms is going to be a little bit better. Now, I've given you a whole bunch of uh, addresses here for where you can get forms, but really just go to Cindy's list. And the reason I'm not, I'm not saying that to promote Cindy. Um, I'm saying that because it's the best option you have. When I was looking at uh, Family Tree Magazine, Ancestry.com, and the Wiki Family Search, um, it was really hard for me to find direct URLs. Uh, you have to go um, to a specific form. Uh, you have to search for a specific form instead of going to a menu page that lists them all. Maybe Family Tree was the easiest. Uh, but Wiki, Family Tree, I didn't find um, direct links that I could give you. Whereas Cindy has compiled all the direct links right here. This is only partially what you see on this page, uh, her list. Uh, but you can see all the Canadian things. And I am sure if you click on those, you'll go directly to those forms. Um, so just if you need forms, go here, and you'll go directly to what you need. It's going to be a lot easier and save you time. Now, forms brings me to the topic of you know, the history of the research plan. Now, I'm calling it a research plan, and I have to tell you that when I do things, I tend to modify them according to the world of Marion, how Marion likes to research. So uh, I'm, I'm not necessarily following a strict school of thought when I'm pre presenting information to you. Now, I've been participating in the ProGen course, and I've taken various courses, and I've certainly read um, extensively on uh, research calendars, uh, but I've adapted them so that they function well for me, and that's what you're getting. In order to understand where I'm going with the research plan, we need to understand what the traditional research calendar was, and that's what they used to call it, a research calendar. And I think that that phrase is going out of fashion now. Now here's an example of a traditional research calendar. This one is one of the free forms from Ancestry.com. So you notice at the top it says family, and then it says researcher. In the family, there you would put a surname, okay? Researcher, you would put your own name. And then we have date, repository, description of source, time period, and results. The whole concept behind the research calendar was, in days before the internet and before computers, that you would print these off or buy copies, and this would be a chronological record, and you would attach it into your, uh, your surname folder or whatever folder you have, and you would start uh, with the present, and every time you did research, you would add a date and the next item, so that you have a chronological in-order listing of all your research. Uh, that's a great idea. I don't have any problem with that, but the problem I have is these fields are so absolutely tiny, you can't fit any information into this field. I mean, look at the date. You can't even actually fit a date into that field. A microfilm number is not going to fit into that box, and it's just, from my point of view, it's not very practical. Here's another example of a research calendar. This is a free online form from Family Tree Magazine. I like this one much better. This is an improvement. So we've got researcher, just like we did on the last page. This time, though, we have ancestor instead of surname. I think that's much better. We need to be more specific when we're talking about planning our research. Another thing I really like about this form is that it says locality and then state, country, town, uh, and time period. So we're getting more specific with this form. We're drilling it down to a specific ancestor, as we should. We're choosing a specific tape. Uh, place, 
and we're acknowledging that there needs to be um, a set time period. We're not dealing with three or four hundred years worth. We are dealing with a specific time related to that ancestor. And I also really like the fact that it has a problem statement. Uh, that's a really beneficial thing. However, let's look at the bottom again. We have our, it's again controlled by the date. That's the leftmost field. Where available, it's tiny. Call number, you can fit like three characters in there. So in essence, it's a pretty good form, but it's not practical because there's just no space to actually write anything. And here's a, a final copy I have. This one is called a research log. So we're morphing from the whole research calendar idea to a research log, as in logging in your research. This is from um, the Family Search Wiki. And this is just a sample. You actually have to log in. Uh, but when you log in, I believe that they will give you a copy of this form. And, and this one's not too bad either. It's a little bit more specific, just like the last one. So this is where we have come from in terms of cataloging our research in the past. What I want to do today is adopt a research plan mentality. It's much more than reactively um, tracking your research after you've done it, I want to switch to a planning mentality and integrate you and the research plan into every aspect of your genealogical research. So you're thinking and planning before you even go out to do the research, and then you're recording after you do the research. So it's a much more holistic sort of attitude. So what I want you to do is to stop stumbling your way to discovery through online, by just getting online, going wherever. Uh, I want you to start searching with purpose and intent. I want you to step back and take the time to determine what is available out there, and I want you to go find it. Research plan is all about taking control. And I think that is much more um, effective genealogical research strategy. Um, so instead of just going forward and hoping that you find something, don't you think it would be better if you figured out what was already out there and then you go and get it? And that's what we're going to talk about today and how we're going to make that happen. So research plans are not just a chronological log of your research. For me, the modern research plan involves thoughtful planning, setting goals, working to achieve those goals, and then recording your findings. So my definition of a research plan is probably a little bit broader than other people's or uh, a little bit broader than you might have expected if you didn't know what one was. Now, you might not believe this, but when I was in college, I was a certified scuba diver. Not only was I a certified scuba diver, I actually worked at a dive shop and assisted with classes. And it just seems so, so very long ago, like another lifetime. Anyways, one thing I learned when I was scuba diving is they have a saying, plan your dive and dive your plan. There are certain very important things in scuba diving. The, the, the most important thing is that you have this tank of air, and it's, it's not limitless. It, it empties, and you need to make sure that you're out of the water by the time that it becomes empty. So you need to consider things like how long are you going out for? How deep are you going? Um, all these kinds of things, and therefore, it's critical that you plan your dive, and then when you're in the water, you stick to that plan, you dive your plan. When it comes to scuba diving, that could actually mean life or death. Luckily, with research plans, it doesn't mean life or death. It just means whether you're going to waste your time or not, uh, and whether you're going to stay on track. So my philosophy is you know, plan your research, and then when you get out there, stick to your plan. All right, let's talk about how we're actually going to uh, create a research plan. This is the overview, and I'm going to go into each one of these topics. So first, I'm going to ask you to choose a project, uh, an individual or family. Then we need to set goals and objectives. We need to determine what kind of questions should be answered. 
what do you already know? And you do know certain things, even if you don't have a lot of information. Uh, we need to see.